In this video, we're going to talk about Simpson's paradox. This is a fascinating statistical paradox that causes a lot of problems in the ways we think about and report on all sorts of statistics in society. For example, the survivability of COVID-19. So let me illustrate this with an example. I'm going to compare China and Italy. Italy was one of the initial countries in the COVID-19 pandemic to have a huge spike in cases after it left China. And I'm going to focus on something called the CFR or case fatality rate. Basically, this says if you have COVID-19, what are your chances of surviving this particular disease? Now, it turns out that when you look at all the cases, and I'm going to focus on a period between early March and late May, when you look at all the cases in China and all the cases in Italy, there's a clear pattern. You are more likely to survive in China than you are in Italy. And you can wonder why that might be the case, or you can question the reliability of that data. But nevertheless, let's take that as a fact for this video. You're more likely to survive in China than you are in Italy. However, it turns out that if you dig a little bit deeper, a very different type of relationship appears. In this chart, I am breaking down the CFR rate based on different age groups. So I'm looking at 20 year olds, 30 year olds, 40 year olds, 50 year olds, and so on every 10 years. And if you look at any one of those age range, take say 60 year olds, it turns out that 60 year olds in Italy who have COVID-19 are more likely to survive than 60 year olds in China who have COVID-19. Same for 70 year olds, same for 80 year olds, same for 20 year olds in every different age bucket. You're more likely to survive if you get the disease in Italy than you are in China. And yet overall, when you put the total here, when you aggregate it all up, it's better off to be in China than it is in Italy. So how can that be? How can in every possible age bucket it be better in Italy, yet overall it be better in China? So I actually encourage you to pause the video and see if you can figure out what a reason for that might be. All right, if you got that, wonderful, you're an excellent statistician, but if you're just here to enjoy the show, then the answer is about age demographics. This chart shows the breakdown in terms of age. It shows the percentage of the total patients who are in any different age range. And what we see here is that in Italy, there is a higher proportion of older patients, patients in their 80s and 70s, than there are younger patients, patients in say their 30s or 40s. And this matters a lot because one of the key features of COVID-19 is that it is much easier to survive if you are younger than if you are older. So the fact that Italy has this higher proportion of older patients who have gotten COVID-19 means their survivability rates are pulled down because of this phenomenon. So even though they're doing a relatively good job among any individual age group, that they have more of the higher risk age groups in their overall profile causes a problem. And that's the core idea of Simpson's paradox. Simpson's paradox is when the trend for aggregate data, when you put everything together, is different from the trend when you go and subdivide it into different categories and you look within each category. And that's exactly what's happened here. Now, I actually just made up some data just to illustrate the point even more clearly. This is just some arbitrary made up horizontal axis, some made up vertical axis. And if you just looked at this data, well, what do you think the trend is? If I wasn't thinking about Simpson's paradox at all, I might just look at this and think, well, it's just generally a downward trend. As you increase in the horizontal, you go down in the vertical. I could plot a trend line here and it looks like a somewhat decent trend line. It's kind of convincing. But this data actually comes from three different categories and I'll just color code it to illustrate those different categories. Well, now it looks very different. In each of these three colors, it looks like an upwards trend and we have these upward trend lines. These three categories would be like, for example, three different countries or three different states. It depends on what it is that we're actually measuring. But nevertheless, the key message here is when you aggregate data over a lot of different categories, the trend can appear to be one thing, but that when you divide it into categories, the trend is actually something very different. This is a very important thing to keep in mind whenever you see statistics about pretty much any phenomenon. For example, right now I'm recording in early July, but when you look back a few weeks into June of 2020 and the COVID-19 pandemic, particularly in the United States, if you just looked at the country-wide statistics, you might think that actually things are just kind of flatlining. They're not getting much worse or much better. But if you look at the level of individual states, there's big states like New York and New Jersey where the cases were going down, while other states like Arizona or Texas had their cases going up. 
And so you might think, okay, everything's sort of stable, but not realizing that when you zoom in on individual states, it's a very different picture. And then now in early July, we see that the answer has been, there has been massive growth in a now a wide swath of states that are seen a little bit earlier, but only if you look at the state level, not the country level. And indeed, in statistics, this is a very common problem. What level of aggregation do you want to focus on? If you put everything together in one bundle, you may miss the true story, for example, with Simpson's paradox, as I've illustrated in this video. But if you zoom in too much and don't aggregate at all, for example, maybe you look at individual counties, not states, or heck, individual people, well, you can't really say anything. The data becomes too messy. So with statistics, you're always wanting to aggregate to some degree so you can make some more meaningful trend lines appear. But at the same time, not aggregate so much that you lose the story. You have to be very careful about what are the actual causal relationships to know where in that picture is appropriate to aggregate or not. I once experienced a similar phenomenon in my own research in mathematics education. I was doing this study where we had 23 different classes and about half of them were using active learning techniques where the students were supposed to work together in groups and collaborate. And in the other half, the students were mainly just doing passive learning techniques, like listening to an instructor lecture, kind of like what you're doing right now. And when you looked at everything, the general trend was that the active learning classes were doing better than the passive learning classes. And this is consistent with the research in mathematics education in general. However, to be really convinced that that was the case, I had to explore a particular confounding variable because it turned out that Students were not being randomly assigned into the different classrooms. The way that it worked at the institution that I was doing this study was that an individual classroom was often highly populated based on the way that students registered by one particular program, like one particular branch of engineering would all fit into one class. Because different branches within engineering had different competitiveness, and therefore the caliber of the student going into that were different. It might mean that a classroom was doing better, not because of the pedagogical techniques used, but because they happened to be composed of students who generally had higher test scores. This is the way the registration would work. It wasn't a random sampling. And so what I had to do was make sure that even when you did this, when you accounted for the different categorizations by different types of programs, that there was still nevertheless a net positive benefit. And indeed, Simpson's paradox is most likely to occur in scenarios like that, where there's not a randomized experiment. There were structural differences between Italy and China. There were structural differences between different states. There were structural differences between the students in one classroom and the students in another classroom. They're not just completely random variables. And as a result of that, those different categories can make big differences to the phenomenon that's being studied. All right, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please give it a like because YouTube likes algorithm just as much as us mathematicians do. If you have a question about this video, leave it down in the comments below and we're gonna do some more math in the next video.